Hi, this is Pastor Philip Nelms of Renaissance Christian Fellowship, and I want to personally welcome you to our podcast channel. We would be honored for you to like and share our podcast channel on your preferred podcast outlet and social media. Thanks for taking time to listen, and I pray you are blessed by today's message. Please stay tuned to the end of the podcast where you can find additional information about this ministry and our teaching resources. I hope you enjoy the message. If you have your Bibles and you want to turn with me, I'm going to give you rapid fire, three quick scriptures, and then we're going to get into this. This is going to be just a little bit shorter. Luke 4.32, these are all King James, says, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And I was talking about Jesus. All right, next scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, 1 Corinthians 4.20, says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. And one more. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. For our gospel, our good news, came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Okay, those are your three opening scriptures. This week, I have been reminding myself, and the Lord has been reminding me, that this meeting that we hold here is not called the School of the Bible. All right, we absolutely must study, learn, and know the written Word of God so that we can stay grounded in His truth, And so that we become stable, okay? When we know His Word, when we hide it in His heart, uh, by His Word, we learn to discern. We learn to grow and discern good and evil. And the Word keeps us from deception. And I'm going to be honest, we're we're coming into a time and season where deceptions are abounding. And uh, the thing about the enemy and deception is the enemy knows the Word very well. And so he'll give you Word And then he throws in the on top of it or the twisting of it. Well, if you don't know the word, you'll be subject to deception as well. So it's important that we know the word. But I am reminded again that we call this meeting the school of the spirit. And it's not because we made that name up. The Holy Spirit gave me that name in prayer. And so that means more than just Bible study, okay? It implies that these meetings are designed with an emphasis on the divine supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit and learning how to operate in those gifts. And we make no apology for that. This is what we're commissioned to do here. We, the church, are entering into this age where it's absolutely essential that we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit and, as the Scripture says, not just have a form of godliness, not just have a theology that argues about the existence of God or, or Jesus as Savior. Okay, I'm not saying that we don't. We, obviously, we do have that. Okay, But if I'm lost and I don't believe in your God, if I don't believe in your Jesus, I need some sort of witness to this being the truth. So, well, no, you should just have faith and believe. Well, the problem is I'm lost. I'm dead on the inside. I have a dead spirit man. Until I've connected with the Lord in the salvation experience, I can't have faith. I don't see in the spirit. I'm spiritually blind. I'm spiritually deaf. What I need as as someone who's lost, I need a believer who actually walks in the divine to show me as a witness that this is true. They need to see evidence. So, well, that doesn't sound like faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is not blind. Faith is built on evidence. Okay? So God does not have a problem with this. All right? He actually does have a problem with his church trying to do it by word only, by theology, by argument only. And not with power. Isn't that what those three scriptures I gave you at the beginning said? It's not just word, but word and power together. 
Jesus Christ is the doorway into the kingdom of God. If you don't come through Jesus, you can't get to any of these other things that we're talking about tonight. He is the way. Okay, There are others who try to come into the divine, into the supernatural, without going through Jesus. And he talks about that in his word. He says they're, they're robbers. They may be entering into the supernatural, but they're not entering into Jesus, and they're not entering into the Holy Spirit. Okay, There is a, another realm of, of spiritual reality that is not God's heaven that people can access, and that realm is, is filled with evil spirits. Okay, Well, there are many people who are eating of that realm, and they don't realize it. If you're trying to come into the spiritual without Jesus, that's where you're going. You're going to fall far short of heaven, far short of heaven. But Jesus is the doorway into the kingdom. But when you come in through that doorway, when you come in through Jesus, when you come in through salvation, now what happens is your spirit is made alive again. You light up on the inside. And the scripture says you become a new vessel. You become a new wineskin. And the reason now as a new wineskin, the, the reason you have been made new is because heaven wants to pour wine into you. The new wine is the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit comes in power. Before any man or woman operates in the gifts of the Spirit, there has to be a receiving of the gift. Now, the Holy Spirit actually is the gift, but when you receive him, you receive all the gifts that he has, plural. And we receive the Holy Spirit just like we receive Jesus, we receive by faith. Okay, everything accessed in the kingdom is accessed by faith. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, when he comes in, he has a job to make us new, to, to regenerate our spirit, our dead spirit. But there's, and I won't get too deep in this tonight because we're going to keep it short, but there's the operation of the Holy Spirit. And you'll see this in the, if you look this up in the New Testament, the Spirit within and the Spirit upon. Okay, so the Spirit within does one thing, the Spirit upon you. Same Spirit, different operations. The Spirit comes within you, renews you, saves you. The Spirit upon will come upon you for power. The spirit within and upon together is what we're looking for, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Because when we're walking in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, then you walk in what the Scripture is talking about, this power, divine power. The Spirit of God comes not just with teaching of the Word. It's very important. We teach the Word. I'm doing that right now. I'm teaching you the Word. But you know why I'm teaching you the Word? Because Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, if you're going to access the things of the kingdom, you're going to have to come in faith. So we have to teach the word. We have to get the word flowing you so that faith comes up in you. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he comes with some manifestations. Manifest just means it, it can be seen. He's manifesting himself in power. And power being, we've said it before, the Greek word is dunamis or dunamis. So the Greek word dunamis is this word power, which is talking about the, the Holy Spirit's creative, miracle working, and it's a word we would get dynamite from. It's an explosive power of God. Dunamis is the power that raised Jesus from the dead. And the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead can now dwell in you. And his power shows up in his church with demonstrations of signs and wonders. To be baptized in the Holy Spirit means you are fully immersed and infused and covered by him. In every area, spirit, soul, and body. When you're baptized in water, you are put under completely you're soaked you're saturated there's no part of you that's not in contact with the water well this is a picture he is the water the spirit is the water so when you're baptized in that water you are put under completely okay when you're baptized into jesus 
you are baptized into him and him into us. And so when you are baptized into the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God now comes both within us and upon us. And that baptism shows up with evidence. And the evidence is dunamis power. Okay, the Spirit comes with signs and wonders. The Spirit shows up within His believers with gifts. He also comes with fruits. We're not going to get into all of that tonight. But He comes with gifts. All right, He doesn't come to you empty-handed. He's coming loaded down with gifts for you. The Scripture speaks of these gifts of the Holy Spirit, including the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, prophecy, praying in unknown tongues, interpretation of tongues, discerning of spirits, actually a discerning of evil spirits, gift of faith, gift of healing, the working of miracles. Okay, these are all manifestation gifts of the Holy Spirit that was spoken of by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, and these are by no means the only gifts of the Spirit. There are many. But these are the gifts that manifest through the church in power. Again, manifest means they can be seen and witnessed because we're told to be witnesses. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, prophecy, uh, tongues, interpretation of tongues, and discerning of spirits all involve revelation. The Holy Spirit is revealing divine secrets to you. Okay, word of wisdom and word of knowledge tend, tend to go hand in hand. Word of knowledge means I'm, I'm going to tell you something about you or your life that I have no other way to know. It's, it's knowledge-based. Word of wisdom is me telling you what to do about it. Okay, In other words... The wisdom comes from the Lord to show you how to handle situations. Knowledge is just that. It's just knowledge. It can be just facts. Prophecy. We know what prophecy is. It is both foretelling and forthtelling by the Holy Spirit. Tongues and interpretation of tongues. Those, those go together and that tongues are revelation by the Holy Spirit. You're praying out things in the Spirit uh, with supernatural utterance, you don't know what you're praying, and then you can interpret those if, if you walk in that gift of interpretation. So it's like prophecy, okay? It, the interpretation, in other words, it's like a, the, the word came with tongues, but then the interpretation is, is given to you. It becomes like prophecy. The Spirit reveals hidden things, all right? The hidden things of the Spirit realm are revealed to us. That's part of our promise. And in the case of these first five gifts, that I gave you, those are primarily spoken out. They're spoken gifts. Divine faith, healing, and divine miracles. We'll call those gifts 7, 8, 9, all right? Maybe you'll say, well, you said that these are manifest. These are things you can see, and you can't see faith, but you sure can see the evidence of it. Jesus said, the Spirit is like the wind in the trees. You don't see wind. We had a lot of wind today, right? We didn't see wind, but we did see the action of the wind. You saw those trees moving back and forth. You saw those leaves blowing. The Spirit is like that, okay? And when the Spirit of faith comes, it will move you. You will see it. It will be seen. You will see the action and the outcome, the result of faith. Jesus specifically said the wind moves the trees, and this is like the Spirit. Well, guess who the trees are? We are. The, all through the scripture, it talks about trees. You know, Psalm 1, you be like a tree planted by the waters, right? We are the trees that are moved under the moving of the Holy Spirit of God. And all of these gifts are from the Father as a blessing to his people because he's a giver and he's a blesser and he is not withholding any good thing from us. And the power gifts are specifically meant, like I said, as a sign, as a sign to the lost, leading them to see and know and understand Jesus is real, the Father is real. And then you can bring them the word. You can give them the salvation, the knowledge of salvation, and connect them back to the Heavenly Father. It's not just for the lost. It's to operate within the church. Okay, The gifts are meant to build up and edify one another in the church. When we study the word, back to the word, 
the, it's for strengthening us in our walk. It's causing us to become fixed and stable in truth of the word. Okay, like I said, in Psalms 1, it says you will be, be like a tree planted by rivers of living water and your roots go deep and your leaves stay green all the time. The living water that you're planted by is the spirit. Okay, the spirit is described as living water which flows up from a well that opens up inside of you. He said that you, you have wells of living water. Okay, well, that living water is the spirit. The well is when you, when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, something happens in the, in the spirit realm. Something opens up inside of you, and it, it's a direct connection to heaven. It's, it's a direct connection to the spirit. You are his body. You are his vessel. Okay, now you're walking, talking, speaking spirits with the spirit of God in you, working and walking in manifestations of power. The well is connected to heaven. The waters from the well come from the river of life, which comes straight from the throne of God. The river of life is intended to flow from heaven and into the earth through his people. You are wells of that river. Okay? But whether the river is moving or uh, like a flood, okay, or whether it's not moving, it doesn't matter. It's always available. It's always there. So being rooted and grounded in his word means that your root system has gone deep and you're stable and you know how to tap the spirit anytime you need it. You'll never run dry. It's always available. Theologies, teachings by men can be dead and dry or it can be infused with the life of the Spirit. Okay, the Apostle Paul said, I didn't just come to you with the Word, but I came in power. Okay, the power is supposed to back up and confirm the truth of God's Word. You must have the Word, but the Word without the Spirit leads to arguments. It leads to debates. Jesus didn't argue with the lost. He demonstrated the kingdom with power. Paul and the other apostles didn't go into new territory, new countries, and argue with the lost. They preached the word to them, but then they demonstrated the power of the kingdom to them. Jesus wants us to be living witnesses of him. Okay, a witness for Jesus is not just about teaching alone, but it's about demonstration. Okay, you are to demonstrate his kingdom. You are to lay hands on the sick and expect them to recover. You're to cast out demons. What? Demons? Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Mark 16, 17, uh, 17 through 20. I'm going to read this from the God's Word version. It says, these are the miraculous signs that will accompany believers. They won't accompany non-believers. They accompany believers. They will use the power and authority of my name to force demons out of people. They will speak with new languages. They will pick up snakes, and if they drink any deadly poison... It will not hurt them. They will place their hands on the sick and cure them. After talking with the apostles, the Lord Jesus was taken to heaven where God gave him the highest position. The disciples spread the good news everywhere. This is good news. The Lord worked with them. He confirmed by his word the miraculous signs that accompanied it. By the way, Jesus was not telling them to go pick up snakes. Just let me clarify. The promise of the Spirit includes supernatural protection. All right, for example, Paul was bitten by a deadly viper, yet he was not hurt by it. And when the people saw it, they thought he was a god. And he got to preach the gospel to them, and they all got saved. And we are protected from things that the enemy would use to try to take us out of this earth early. Walking in power of the Spirit was the directive of Jesus Christ to his church. Then it was to his whole church, and it is for all time. 
Can you prove it? Of course I can. Uh, Acts 2, 38, 39 says, Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, first, for the remission of sins. Okay, that's baptism into Jesus, the baptism unto salvation. All right, and that's not about water there. And then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. All right, for the promises unto you and unto your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Just as we sang a little earlier, it's to your family and your children and your children to a thousand generations, it says. We have these meetings here that we call School of the Spirit. And we have them because people need to learn about these things. And they need a place where they can learn and be with other people that they trust to step out into these things. Look, I know it can seem scary, but it's not. Okay, the supernatural for the Christian is supposed to be natural. This is our natural state of being. And we can make mistakes along the way. We are human. That's okay. But if we're going to make mistakes and take missteps, it's best to do it in a place of safety with other believers around. All right, we don't judge people. We're learning and we seek to walk in the power of the Spirit with them. If they happen to fall on their face or we happen to fall on our face, it's okay. Babies learn to walk with some trial and error. And there are some falls along the way. So that's why good parents let their babies learn in places where the fall is not going to hurt them if they make a mistake. Okay, good parents will put uh, bumper pads on the hard corners of all the furniture. In the School of the Spirit, you know, we do the same thing. We let, we let everyone, uh, you can wear a helmet, and we'll put bumper pads on all our furniture, you know, metaphorically speaking. And if you step out and you try something, you don't quite get it right, it's okay. We'll just simply pick you up, dust you off, and say, hey, try it again. So that is what School of the Spirit needs to look like. If you fall in here, it's okay. All right, we, make, we make sure that you have a soft landing. And then we'll just pick you up and we'll tell you, hey, try that again. But here's the thing. Faith has to step out. You can learn everything you can know that there is to know about you know, swimming from all the books in the library and from conferences and online classes. But eventually, if you want to swim, you have to jump in the pool. Well, that's what we do here. You got to jump in. Come on in. The water's fine. If what I'm saying to you sounds strange, all right, if you've never experienced this for yourself, it just simply starts with simple prayer. We ask for the Holy Spirit. We ask for Him to come in and bring those gifts to us. That's what He wants. You're not begging Him. That's what He wants. Luke 11, 9 through 13, this is God's Word version, says, So I tell you to ask, and you will receive. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. Everyone who asks will receive. The one who searches will find. And the person who knocks, the door will be opened. Okay, it's not a maybe. The, door, the Lord does not want you to leave empty-handed. If your child asks you, ask his father for a fish, would he give him a snake instead? Or if your child asks you for an egg, would you give him a scorpion? Even though you are evil, compared to God, we're all evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? It is that simple. It's this simple. So this whole teaching tonight really is just about telling you, ask for the Holy Spirit. Ask for Him to come in and give you those gifts. Why? Because this is the instruction of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church. We're to ask for the Holy Spirit. Why? Because He doesn't come in where He's not given permission. That's what demons try to do. You have to invite Him in. 
And if you have, and if you've had trouble receiving right away, the, the Scripture says keep asking. Keep asking. Keep knocking. You will get it. He will open that door. He will open that well. But just remember, these gifts are received by faith. Okay, sometimes I, I get a little bit concerned sometimes about modern Pentecostal church in that sometimes it seems like we're beating on the door and asking and begging the Lord to pour out His Spirit. But here's the truth. Spirit's been poured out. It's fully available. Now it's for us to access it by faith. So a setting like this is a good place to do that. Other believers can pray with you. They can lay hands on you. They don't have to, but we can. It just it helps when you join your faith together with others, when you pray in agreement. And so older believers that already have walked or do walk in these things can guide you. They give you help. We're here because help is always a good thing. So you don't have to learn all of this on your own when there are others in the body of Christ who have walked before you and, and who are there to help you. So if you've never experienced, you've never walked in any of those supernatural gifts and you want to, and I hope you do, all right, we want to give everyone an opportunity to be able to do that. So even tonight, I'm just going to say, we're going to give opportunity again. If, if you want to, if you never have, you need to jump on in. The water's fine. You don't have to fear. If you ask the Father for the Holy Spirit, that is all he's going to give you. You won't get a demon. And that, that's a fear that I hear from people sometimes. But Jesus directly addressed that in Luke 11. We just read it, right? If you ask for the Spirit, He's not going to give you a snake or a scorpion. He's not going to be handing out demons. He doesn't have any to hand out. Because I want to take a little time tonight to minister. Uh, I want us to pray. I want us to, I want to be able to pray for people tonight. If, if you want for us to pray for you. I'd like to pray for everybody. Uh, whether you've been here or not, I'd just like this to be a time of ministry tonight. And we're going to close this off and keep this short. But again, I just want you to ha hear enough word so that faith comes. Like 10, Romans 10, 17 comes by hearing. Let me give you another scripture real quick. Luke 24, 49, Jesus said, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. All right, the power of the Holy Spirit that was poured out on the church on the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago. And on that day, it happened in Jerusalem. But today, we ask wherever we live. He has been poured out. So that Spirit and His power gifts are here. They're here with us tonight, and they're available to you. And it is for us. It is for the church now maybe more than ever, all right? It's by the power of His Spirit and by His glory. It's, uh, in Isaiah 60, it talks about that His glory would be seen over the whole earth like the waters cover the sea, all right? You are, a, you are that sea. The sea is the masses of people. The Holy Spirit desires to be poured out over the entire earth, all right? He wants to rise. He wants that glory to rise on the, on the people of the earth by His Spirit. That is, Jesus said, the promise of the Father. Behold, I send you the promise of the Father. Okay, and His promises are from everlasting to everlasting. They never expire, like we read in Acts 2.39. Psalm 103.17 says, The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. That means it goes on and on and on, never stops. Upon those that fear Him, and his righteousness unto his children's children. Everything he's got is for you, it's for your kids, it's for a thousand generations. So tonight as we close, I'm going to invite you all to come in tonight for prayer. Whether you've walked in this before or not, I believe the Lord wants to show himself tonight strong on your behalf. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask maybe Lynn and Josh to kind of come up and help me tonight. And we just want to pray over you guys. If you've, if you've never experienced the Holy Spirit and power, uh, trust me, you, you need this, you want this. It will change your life for the better. All right, God doesn't want you just to have you know, a theological argument. He wants to endue you with power from on high tonight. He wants to equip you. 
So let's all, let's all stand up. Let's, let's pray a quick prayer. Lord, I'm asking you to speak to these tonight. Speak to these who are in this room. God, let the spirit of prophecy fall in this room. Lord, let your power flow in this room. Lord, let faith rise up in them in this room. Lord, let them taste and see, Lord, how good you really are. Lord, I'm asking you to speak to their hearts. I'm asking you to confirm this word tonight <laughs> Woo, with your signs following. If these things that I have spoken be true or not. And Lord, we speak to those who will hear this later on this podcast. Lord, confirm to their hearts whether this thing be true or not. Lord, and give them boldness and give them courage and give them faith to step up and to ask you for your Holy Spirit and to ask you for your gifts. Lord, you said you would protect them. These are your little ones. You will not let them be, be deceived. And so we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, if you've never made Jesus your Savior and Lord, would you please do it today? You can't afford to put it off one more minute. Your eternal destiny depends on knowing Jesus. Whatever situation you may be in, Jesus can take your life and make something beautiful of it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except that he comes through me. And Romans 10, 9 tells us, that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, that we shall be saved. So if you would like to know Him, repeat this prayer with me today and really mean it from your heart. Say after me, Jesus, I choose this day to make you Lord of my life. I believe that you are the Son of God sent to the earth to pay the price for my sin by your death. I believe that you were raised from the dead and that you are alive today in heaven. Please take my life and do something great with it. Friend, if you prayed that prayer with me today and you meant it, then today is your birthday. Today is the day that you were born again into eternal life. We suggest that you find a good Bible-believing local church where you can connect with other Christian believers and grow in the Lord. Thanks again for tuning into our podcast. This message has been brought to you today free of charge by the friends and ministry partners of Renaissance Christian Fellowship. If you've been blessed by this ministry, would you please consider partnering with us to help send the gospel message to others around the world? For more information on how to donate to this ministry, please visit our Facebook page, www dot facebook dot com forward slash rcf world or you may send us an email at contact us at rcf world dot org again that's contact us at rcf world dot org you may give by debit or credit card directly at paypal dot me forward slash rcf world again that's paypal dot me forward slash rcf world thank you for helping us to promote the gospel of jesus christ around the world